Hey guys, I'm a Microsoft certified Azure architect, and I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer for the last 20 years. One of the questions I get asked the most is, how does PIM work? What's the concept? How do I actually configure it? So I created this just under 30 minute lesson that actually covers the concept of PIM and completely walks through the configuration. You can follow along in your own Azure environment if you choose to. Also, I encourage everyone to check out some of my courses on the Udemy platform that cover Azure and other server products. They're low cost, some are actually free. The link is below to those courses. In this demonstration, what I'm gonna walk through is having two users, Tony Smith and Bob Ross. Tony occasionally needs to create new Azure users and manage users uh, in Azure. Since he only needs to occasionally do this, we want Tony to manually activate the role before he can manage user accounts. So he does not always have these rights or that role assigned when he logs in, he has to manually go through and activate that. And when he does that, he must use multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is gonna be one of two things. Either Tony is gonna to have to receive a text message on his mobile device, or he has to use the Authenticator app and he can actually use that as his form of authentication. He can have a code in the Authenticator app that he can select and he can use that to authenticate. Or once he's registered this, he can simply have a notification sent to the Authenticator app that just says, Tony, I see you're trying to log in. Do you want to deny or approve the login? He can just click approve, he'll authenticate. Now he has access to this role. My other user, Bob Ross, he needs to, on a regular basis, create new Azure users and manage existing users. He must always have access to do this. I don't want him to take any additional steps. So when he logs in, he should have that ability. Well, let's get started with the configuration. In this demonstration, I'm gonna walk you through Azure Active Directory Privileged Identity Management. Takes too long to say that, so everyone calls it Azure PIM or just PIM. I just call it PIM. What we can do with this PIM is delegate control. Environments on-premise have done this going back to Windows 2000, if not before. If I have a help desk, I would delegate my help desk the ability to reset passwords, maybe the ability to create user accounts, but not delete a user account. So you could delegate those rights that you wanted certain users or certain groups to have. That is exactly what PIM is. It's a form of delegation, but it has a lot of capabilities. To set this up, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to Azure Active Directory and in my users, I'm gonna create a new user. I'm gonna name this user T Smith. So that'll be my username. We'll say Tony Smith is the actual name. And we'll just fill in the rest of these fields here. I'm gonna set the password for Tony Smith. We will not add our user to any groups. They are only assigned the user role and we're not changing anything else. I'm just gonna create that user. Tony Smith has been created. In the browser, I'm just going to go to portal.azure.com. I'll just paste in his username. So it is going to prompt me to change the password. So we'll set the new password for Tony. So I'm logged in as Tony. Well, right now, if I were to go to Azure Active Directory, select users, notice I can see the user accounts here, but I can't do anything. I can't create a new user. 
bulk create, bulk delete, download, uh, delete. I can't do any of those things. If I were to select another user, I'm going to click on DPAC. If I try to reset password, you'll notice as I, I can't even do that. I can't do anything here because I have no administrative rights. What I want to be able to do is create new user accounts. That is the ultimate goal. That is where PIM comes in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my Azure portal. Now I'm signed in with a global administrator account here. In Azure, you don't have PIM in your favorites by default. So if you go to all services and just search PIM, you'll see it show up in the list. I'm going to add it to my favorites by clicking on this little star here. So it's always in the list. I'm just going to move that up a bit so I don't have to search for it. What I can do now, when I click on Azure PIM, now my PIM is already enabled. If you have a new account or a trial account in Azure, be aware that before you can use PIM, you have to have Azure AD Premium 2 or Enterprise Mobility Plus Security, this EMS 5. If you don't have that, it will directly tell you that in the interface, and it'll give you the option to activate a trial account for the Azure AD Premium 2 or for the EMS. Either one of those would give you access to this. Otherwise, you would already need to have a license. But mine is already running Azure AD Premium 2, so that is taken care of. Under this Manage section, you can manage Azure AD roles. You can also manage resources. Resources would apply to resource groups, virtual machines, like objects that you really create. The Azure AD roles, that is more applying to like rights. What capabilities do you have? Not necessarily what objects can you manage. If I click on the Azure AD roles, there are a lot of roles that exist. When this opens up, if I click on roles here, you'll see there are roles related to applications. Some of these are related to Microsoft Exchange, Skype, Power BI, there's a printer administrator, some of these are related to security, security reader, operator, administrator. Several are related to Microsoft Teams. There's a SharePoint. There's a user administrator. Well, when I scroll up the list, I have this active and eligible column. An active assignment means the moment you log in, this is automatically assigned to you. So you always have this role assignment. An eligible role is a role that you actually have to request access to. You have to sign in and say, I want to activate this role. Only when you activate it do you then have that level of access. Well, if I scroll down the list, notice it's all zeros in both columns except for this. The global administrator. I have one active global administrator. You can guess who that would be. That is the account I'm actually using right now. So if I click this active roles, you can see that my Kevin account is the active role. What I want to do is go to user administrator and under user administrator, I'm just going to click this add assignment. You can see that role I clicked on user administrator is selected, but grayed out here in the list. Under select members, I'm going to click on this hyperlink and I'm going to choose our Tony Smith account. It'll take a moment, but that'll populate. You'll see Tony Smith is in the list. I'm just going to select Tony Smith. We'll click next. Now I can say Tony Smith is eligible or active. Big difference between the two. Active means the moment Tony signs in, every time Tony signs in, he has these rights. If we make him eligible, 
he signs in does not have these rights until he manually activates the role. I also have the option to put an expiration on this. So I can say for Tony, he is only eligible within these time frames. So you can have a start date and an end date. If you choose permanently eligible, this never expires. I mean, three, four years from now, he could still activate that role. It just truly has no expiration on it. You would have to remove it if you wanted Tony to stop using it. So it completely depends on what your goal actually is. But I'm just going to click assign. And that takes no time. Tony is now assigned the user administrator role. I'm going to go back to my browser. We see now Tony cannot create a new user. That's all grayed out. All I'm going to do is sign out. And I'm going to sign right back in. I'm going to say no to stay signed in. I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do now is search for PIM. So under my all services here, I'm just going to type PIM. You'll see it shows up in the list. Under my roles, under tasks, you'll see user administrator shows up as an eligible role. If I click active roles, I don't have any active roles because I've not yet activated anything. So if I go to eligible, I can go over here and I can choose to activate. Now, this is using multi-factor authentication by default. So it says additional verification required. Click to continue. If I choose that, it says oh, we need some more information about Tony Smith. So I'm just going to choose next. So here it says, how should we contact you? I have two options. I can authenticate using my phone. If I do that, it will send me a text message. The other is to use the mobile app. If you use the mobile app, you can actually go to the Google Play Store. If you're on an Android device, you can go to the uh, App Store. If you're on an iOS, Apple-based uh, device, and you can download the Microsoft Authenticator app. So my preference, really, if I want to have this sent to me in a text message or if I want to use the application. Now, the text message is too simple. With that authentication phone, you literally type in your phone number and click next and it sends you a text message. So I'm going to choose the mobile app. Now, I know you can't see my phone, but I have already gone to the Google Play Store and I've downloaded this mobile app. I'm just going to Actually, pull up the Google Play Store here. In Google Play, if you just search Authenticator, you'll see Microsoft Authenticator is in the list. You just need to install that app. Now, I already have that installed, so it's on my smartphone already. But here, I'm going to say for my mobile app, I want to receive notifications for verification and I'm just going to click setup. This is pretty neat. It tells you exactly what to do. It says install the Microsoft Authenticator app for your Windows phone, as if you're using that, Android or iOS. It says in the app, add an account and choose work or school and scan the image below. That's all I have to do. So I have my app open and I'm just going to click on work or school and I will scan that image. That added my Tony Smith account to my device. So now I can click on that. And this actually says next down here. It often just drops below the menu though. But now when I click on that, it's going to check the activation status. says we've been configured, so I'm going to click next. And now my smartphone has approve sign in, uh, T. Smith, deny or approve. I'll just click approve and that will fully authenticate me. Verification successful. 
Now it says, in case you lose access to the mobile app, do you want to add a phone number? I'm not going to add a phone number. I'm just going to sign in. So for this, stay signed in. I'm going to say no for that. So now you can see the activate. The duration is eight hours. So that's how long this will actually be activated for. Now, this does require me right now to provide a reason. This is actually called a justification when you're in the settings. But I'm just going to say create new user accounts in Azure. And I'm going to click activate. We are activated. Now I do have to sign out and sign back in. So I'm just going to sign out here. We'll sign back in with that same account. Now that that role has been activated, if I go to Azure Active Directory. Now, if you do this on your own, sometimes it takes about 30 seconds or so before that is completely processed on the back end. So when you click users here, you'll see what well, mine's already working because now I can click new user. If I click one of these other users, I'm going to select uh, Deepak Patel. If I click reset password, it actually works now. Gives me the option to reset password. When I clicked that before, I did not have the rights to actually do it. So my user Tony has now activated that role and can manage user accounts. That activation remains for the next eight hours. So whatever it is that you wanted to activate, you select it from that, assign the user that needs that role and you can decide if it's going to be eligible, meaning they manually request activation, or if it's going to be always activated. They just log in and they automatically have those uh, rights to those roles defined. I'm going to switch back to the Azure portal for a moment. When I looked at this before, I could see my user rights assignment. Eligible was Tony. If I click on active, I can see Tony is now active because he activated that role. I can also come over here and completely remove that. So if I wanted to undo all of this for that specific user, I could just remove and Tony would lose that activation. So I can remove that role assignment in its entirety. One of the other things we can do for any role. Now I'm in the properties of my user administrator assignments, but if you click back on your default directory roles, this is all the roles that exist. So if I just click on my user administrator again, if I click on the settings, we can see some of the settings that were defined for us when we went through that process. The activation was eight hours by default. I had to require a justification. I had to enter a reason. I had to use multi-factor authentication. So an activation require MFA, yes. If you edit this, I could say your maximum duration, 30 minutes. I can say I do not require multi-factor authentication. I do not require justification. So I could deselect those and I could simply update that. Now, if we were to activate this role, Tony Smith is still an eligible user, but you'll see he's no longer active. So we removed him just saying, I'm revoking his ability to be active at the moment, but under eligible, you can see that is not removed. If we refresh, that's still in the list. Now, if you wanted to completely remove, you just select that again, and Tony no longer has those rights. But what I'm going to do is go back to the portal where Tony Smith is signed in, and I'm just going to sign out. 
signed back in. I'm going to go to my PIM. Oh, I didn't add that as a favorite, so we'll just search for PIM here. I'm going to click on My Roles. User Administrator, I'm just going to click Activate. Some things you'll notice. Duration, half an hour now. The little asterisk here that indicated the reason was mandatory. We don't require justification anymore. And if I just click activate, it just works. It does not make me use the authenticator app, does not force me to receive a text message or anything like that. Tony has that ability. So as soon as this says stage three is completed, I could simply sign out and sign back in. And Tony now could manage these objects. That's it. That is active for Tony. Now I'm going to switch back to the portal that has my administrator account uh, logged in. The other option we had, say under user administrator here, if I were to add another assignment, if I were to select Bob Ross this time, just another user I have, I'm going to copy the credentials for Bob Ross there. But I'm going to click Next. And all Next does is carry me to the settings here. I'm going to choose Active. This means Bob Ross is always active. He always has this role. He does not have to go manually activate it when he wants to manage user accounts. Now, this by default does require me to enter a justification when I set it to Active uh, for that user. I'll say manages users and we'll assign that to Bob Ross. So now the moment Bob Ross logs in, if he goes to Azure Active Directory, he can create new users. I'm going to sign out as T Smith. And I'm going to sign in as B Ross. If I go to Azure Active Directory, Users, you'll see I can create a new user right now. And I'm, I'm going to search PIM. If I pull up PIM while I'm logged in with Bob Ross, I'm going to click on My Roles. Notice Eligible Roles, this time I have none. If I click on Active Roles, User Administrator. It is assigned, it's permanent, meaning it does not have an end date, and you cannot deactivate or extend because you always have this when you sign in. So for the active role, there is no additional step that the user would actually take. They just log in and it just works. Now, if I go back to my portal with my administrator account, You'll see, I'm still under the user rights administrator here. And again, just so we don't get lost in the console, when I'm in PIM itself, if I go to my Azure AD roles, I can click on assignments here. Now, if you do the assignments, you have to filter this by specifying the user. I don't like to do that. So I'm gonna click on the roles. You can scroll down the list and I can see User Administrator. I can see Tony Smith is eligible. I can see that under Active Roles, Bob Ross shows up. If I want to completely remove Bob Ross, so this would undo everything. That role assignment is completely removed. 
If I click eligible, I could remove Tony Smith. So he no longer even has the ability to go and activate the role if we do this. Now, just for dramatic effect, since we've removed those assignments, we saw under Azure Active Directory, when I was logged in with Bob Ross, I could create a new user account that was selectable. If I sign out, and we'll sign in one more time, I'm going to go back to Azure Active Directory. I'm going to select Users. And you'll notice that's actually now grayed out. Now, if you do this on your own, it does take about 30 seconds or so from the time you actually remove a role to the time it is finished processing. Because I've had uh, many students that would uh, remove a role and they immediately sign back in with the other account, but they do it so fast it has not completely finished processing and they get confused because they're wondering why can I still create a new user when I've removed that role assignment? And it's just, you need to sign out, sign back in to make sure enough time has actually passed. But usually it's about 30 seconds or so typically. So not long enough that it poses a security risk or anything like that. If you wanna learn more about Azure, or if you want to get Azure certified, I have several courses on the Udemy platform that cover Azure Fundamentals, Azure Administrator, and several other Azure courses. So be sure to look at the description below and you can see the link to all the courses I offer.